So our job is to go from philosopher to initiate to master, from knowledge to experience to wisdom, from mind to body to soul, from thinking to doing to being, to learning it with your head, practicing it with your hands, and knowing it by heart. And this is a time in history where it's not enough to know. This is a time in history to know how. And I can tell you from my traveling around the world, the common people that look just like you are doing the uncommon. They're healing themselves of very serious health conditions. They're creating better opportunities and better lives for themselves, new careers. They're healing old scars and wounds that kept them connected to the past. And they're having mystical experiences that transcend language. And they look just like you. That most people in their life wait for that crisis or the trauma, the disease or the diagnosis, some kind of loss, betrayal in their life before they make up their mind to change. And my message has always been, why wait? Why wait for that tragedy before you decide to change who you are? That when you begin to apply these principles because you understand that they work, then it means then you'll believe in a future more than you believe in your past. And people who do the work are more in love with their future than they are with their past. And they're more interested in telling the story of possibility in their future than reliving the emotions and experiences of the past. And you know, the beauty behind all of this is that you don't have to be a monk. You don't have to be a priest. You don't have to be a rabbi. You don't have to have 40 years of meditation. You don't have to be a scholar or an academic. As a matter of fact, it's better if you're not. Because the simplicity of all of this when people begin to apply it is they begin to experience the fruits of their efforts and I can tell you there isn't a person that is so special to be excluded from this phenomenon and that your thoughts literally have an effect on your body that all thoughts carry an energy or a frequency and if you believe that on some level that your thoughts have something to do with your body or your life and you're thinking 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same redundant thoughts as the day before, it's going to produce the same measurable effects in your body, yes or no. And you are going to begin to emit the same energy and information in your field. And you are going to keep creating the same life. So then the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices always lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences. And the same experiences produce the same feelings and the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive your very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your hormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, you would have to change your personality, yes or no? That means then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors and modify them. Even what you say and how you talk, and you would have to look at those emotions that keep you connected to your past because emotions are the end product of past experiences. And you would have to decide, do these emotions belong in my future? That means if you want to be wealthy, you can't take lack or unworthiness. A wealthy person would never feel that way. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You're literally going to have to become someone else. And it's a fact that by the time we're 35 years old, we become memorized to a set of automatic programs, behaviors, beliefs, perceptions, emotional reactions that function subconsciously. 
So then the first process of change then would become conscious of your unconscious thoughts. The fact that you can observe how you're thinking, notice how you're acting, and pay attention to how you're feeling. The moment you can observe that, it means you're no longer the program, yes or no? You're the consciousness observing the program, and you're beginning to objectify your subjective self. You're no longer your biology. You're the consciousness observing who you are. So then the word meditation then literally means to become familiar with. That's what it means. That's the symbol. The moment you become aware of that then, it means then you're less likely to lower your energy and your emotional state during your day because you would become conscious of it. And what if then you decided what thoughts do I want to put my attention behind? Let me review them, how a great person would think. What would be the internal dialogue they would have? And if you did that a few times, you would begin to install some circuits in your brain, yes or no? And who knows? In your waking day, you may start thinking like a great person. And if you said, I'm going to master this day, one day, one lifetime, how would an unlimited person live today? And you began to rehearse in your mind who you were going to be before you opened your eyes. The act of rehearsing mentally, when you're truly present, your brain does not know the difference between what's going on out there and what's going on in here. And all of a sudden, you begin to install more circuits in your brain, priming it. All of a sudden, installing those circuits so that you have the hardware in place to act. And if you've done that enough times, would you all of a sudden start acting like that person? In your waking day, because you've primed your brain instead of to be a record of the past, that now it's becoming a map to the future. And then what if you said, now this is to me greatness, can I teach my body emotionally what my future is going to feel like before it's made manifest? The moment you start feeling wholeness, your healing begins. The moment you start feeling worthy and abundant, you're walking towards your future. The moment you're empowered by a vision and every single day you're living in that energy, you are going to tune into a new future and synchronicities and serendipities are going to begin to happen all around you. The moment you're in love with yourself and you're in love with life, you're going to magnetize an equal. And the moment you're in awe of knowledge and information, you're going to have a mystical experience. And that's causing an effect. If an experience in your environment produces an emotion, and science tells us it's the environment that signals the gene, when you begin to experience the emotion ahead of the environmental experience, you're signaling the gene to begin to make new proteins to prepare the body for that future experience. Yeah. Now you're in alignment biologically with the destiny, neurologically, chemically, hormonally, and all of a sudden now, this is the beauty. If you're able to then maintain that state of mind and body, where there's physical evidence in your brain and body to look like the experience has already occurred because you're doing the work, then the magic starts to happen in your life and it comes out of nowhere. Those coincidences, those opportunities that begin to unfold are unfolding because you're no longer living in the known. You're living in the unknown. And I'm telling you, you're more alive and at your best when you're in the unknown than when you're in the known. And I know it from experience, and I've witnessed it too many times. And it will come in a way that you least expect. Why? Because if you can expect it, it's nothing new. If you can predict it, it's more of the same. It's got to be a surprise. It's got to rock your world. It's got to catch you off guard and it has to leave no doubt that what you did inside of you produced some effect outside of you. And that's when we go from being a victim to being a creator.